Amazing. Well, let's begin and let's continue with meeting the dreaming in search of the future. There's a natural synergy here, Andrew and Connie. Let me do a little introduction for you guys. Andrew Cameron Bailey and Connie Baxter-Marlow are original thinkers, writers, photographers, filmmakers, and futurists. They're going to be screening their Down Under teaser right here, right now, featuring the wisdom carriers who offer, offer their insights for the film In Search of the Future 2, The Only Way Out Is Up, during Andrew and Connie's three-month journey to Australia, February to May 2024. Now we'll discuss the significance of the Meeting the Dreaming initiative honoring 42,000 year old Mungo man and Mungo lady's message to humanity, which relates to their decades long work to bring indigenous cosmology to the Western mind through books, films, forums, and photography exhibitions. In their book, The Trust Frequency, 10 Assumptions for a New Paradigm, Connie and Andrew present a system of cosmological axioms informed by indigenous cosmology, quantum science, and Eastern and Western mysticism which resolve key paradoxes that have kept humanity from walking in balance with universal law and with an open heart. Their film series, In Search of the Future, brings forth indigenous elders, scientists and futurists who bring their catalytic uh, gifts to inspire the shift in consciousness to higher frequencies and new realities that will result when we heal and all colors of humanity walk together in our hearts and bring peace on earth. Connie's insights come from her experience over 20 years with visionary Native American elders. Andrew grew up in South Africa amongst the Zulu and has been in relationship with the son of the Kalahari for decades. Connie and Andrew, welcome to World Unity Week, to this special event in search of the future. It's great to have you here and to be with you. Thank you, Ben. It's great to be here with you and you who have that connectivity to that big reality that you share in our film um, that we interviewed you at Peninsula Hot Springs. Yeah. So what, what having... an honor. This is just a treat and a delight and profoundly important that it's such an honor to be part of something this deep this important, this relevant to our entire species, this deep understanding of our ancient origins and what we might have thought we'd lost and what I think that we white fellows are in the process of regaining as we heal this entire, you know, I, I think we're at the very beginning of a healing that's going to make a profound difference to the future which we are chasing down every time we race in the direction of the future it seems to recede but it's a lot of fun along the way and here we are and i want to do two things one is to say that all of the people who stayed on from the last section will and those new ones who came on you will meet all of them in the teaser which is just a beautiful opportunity we had to just get these very beautiful statements from these wonderful people and also to honor those who supported this journey there are people on this multiple gallery screen we're looking at right now who provide financial and other forms of support and help to us to get this job done to get us to australia to get us back we're back in colorado at sunrise ranch right now and wow thank you and ultimately, we want you to raise your digital hand so we can identify you at the end and bring you forth so that you can be acknowledged and if you'd like to speak. So hopefully you, everyone knows how to raise their digital hand at the, in the reactions uh, thing down below on your Zoom screen. So what I want to say is that it's a frequency thing. And I feel that humanity has been responding to a lower vibration, a lower frequency of, of scarcity, of fear, of separation. And that has led to this rather horrific past we've had. We've had some glorious moments, but we've been responding to those energies, all of us. And I just am so excited that, that there's now a higher frequency pulling us forth into our hearts, into a higher way of knowing and being. And, and this whole process is, is that evolutionary upward spiral in process. So it's just so wonderful for each and every one of you who are bringing your gifts to, into that emergent process. Because as one uh, elder said to me, when I asked her if there was gonna be a leader, 
she said, no, we're each going to fit our piece of the hoop together and create the hoop of life. So here we are, the hoop of life coming together in a higher vibration, a higher frequency. So it's all very exciting to be a part of it with you all. And, um, and I, I see the mob is gathering here. The mob is gathering. Hello, mob. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> and uh, I just want to say that, that the call to Australia was extraordinary for us. And, and what I, I asked Spirit, I said, okay, what's this all about? And Jim Bowler himself articulates what has what I'm seeing as the ultimate purpose, and that is meeting the dreaming, coming together with that vision of Australia to bring forth that dream time, that beauty of the indigenous peoples of Australia forward into the Western heart and mind and spirit, which is what the work we've been doing with indigenous cosmology for decades. So it, something wants to be birthed from this coming together as, is what I'm seeing. And um, you have anything you want to say, Andrew? Sure, I think <laughs> uh, we were going to talk about ourselves a tiny bit, just to give a little bit of oh, background yeah. and context. You want to do that first? Sure, sure. Well, I'll start. So um, my thing was I was looking for the missing pieces of the paradigm from a teenager. And I looked in Europe and I only saw the same paradigm I had been raised in. And because we came from Europe and it, that paradigm never worked for me. And then visionary native elders started coming into my life and I saw through them this connectivity to the oneness and sacredness of all life. And and Wallace Black Elk once said something, he said, he referred to man-made law. And I'm like, oh my God, there's something other than man-made law? And here's what, that's what Greg was talking about, this universal law, this first law that, that exists, that's underneath man-made law. And so, um, so it's just so exciting to hear the, the, um, Aboriginal the and, and indigenous Australians who are connected to that same energy of the Native Americans. So that just tells us that, that, that the indigenous peoples are carrying something for us, all indigenous people, and that we all have it, as, as I mentioned before. But meanwhile, these elders came into my life, and then someone said to me, have you read the holographic universe? And three people asked me, the third person put it in my hands, and it, it's, it's, a, it's a quantum physics for lay people. And I saw then that what the, uh, Wallace Black Elk and all these shamanic elders were talking about was quantum science, that quantum science was proving it, but science can't prove the heart and the spirit. And so we've just come together with our work to bring this, the science and the indigenous cosmology together. And that's what Jim Bowler is crying out for. And we're going to play a little piece of Jim speaking to this um, effect shortly. Do you have anything you want to say, my darling? Yeah. So in terms of my personal background, I'm, I was born in England. And at the age of three, I was transplanted to Africa. And I grew up in South Africa in the Indian Ocean's port city of Durban. And so surrounded by Zulus and monkeys and a lot of Indians, East, East Indians, um, Muslims and Hindus, a very multicultural town and very multicultural growing up that I had in apartheid era South Africa. So I did an entire science um, concentration and started teaching college mostly in organic chemistry. And while I was doing that, I realized I had a profound interest, not so much in those scientists, those sciences, interesting as they were, but in human consciousness. I became aware of that at about age 20. And I responded to that by taking another degree in social anthropology with a concentration in so-called comparative religion not the mainstream religions, but the indigenous religions. I have a nice, I'm very happy that I did that. I have a rather nice 
shallow but broad background in many, many cultures and how they have viewed the universe. Among those, um, I'll, I'll say two things on that subject. The two world's oldest cultures that I'm aware of are, of course, the Australian Aboriginal folks and the Sand Bushmen of the Kalahari, <clears throat> both of whom go back a, a very, very long way. Um, the Sand Bushmen were completely absent from my education because social anthropology is the study of living cultures. And the Sand Bushmen at that time scientifically were believed to be extinct. I've got good news for us, all of us. There are today at least 350,000 full blood sand Bushmen living in five countries in Southern Africa. They are very, very good at disappearing into the landscape and surviving through tough times. And they've had extraordinarily tough times. Now, the thing that impressed me the most in that entire study of comparative religion was the section on the Australian Aboriginal dream time. Now to back up, I had a degree in physics and I was supposed to know something about quantum mechanics and quantum physics and I didn't know much. I could get through exams but I think even my professor didn't fully understand it until I'm studying the Australian dream time. And I suddenly realized I had this revelation. I've never forgotten it. I was probably 20 or 21. They are speaking pure poetic quantum physics. The dream time is the same thing that Einstein was trying to explain and that all of these subsequent extraordinary cutting edge physicists are, ex are trying to put scientific language behind are to, from my perspective, what the aboriginals and by extension, let's just say, let's just include all indigenous people, all people who are truly connected to Mama Gaia, Mother Earth, Pachamama. So that's what I'd like to say. Yeah, so let's, let's screen Jim Bowler mm. expressing the very same thing. Ooh. Okay, so Jim, I see you here in the Zoom audience, so you'll just get to experience yourself speaking on a there Zoom call. Is. There he is. There's the man. It's so there's that indigenous component going parallel uh, with the scientific story and the expansion of the Mungo contact w with uh, where people first, or indigenous people, um, we connected, the scientific community connected in a rather dramatic way uh, with the ancestral people of Mungo. Towards the outcomes then, if we proceed down that track of those two, uh, two, two the, the, the joint package of the, uh, the Western view and the indigenous in parallel, towards the outcome, of, uh, of bringing these two uh, cultures together. And they come together, I believe, in that sense of sharing the common ground and confronting both the scientific mysteries from the Big Bang. It's all very well for scientists now to be able to say, we can uh, analyze and construct, uh, we can weigh, measure, and, uh, and, and, and predict what is happening. Uh, but how and why it happens, the, the immense mystery remains. The mysteries of science. Science has done so much um, uh, to expand our understanding of ourselves and nature, but not to explain how or why it all happens. Side by side with that, the indigenous people, they have done exactly the same. They have determined uh, their sense of of Genesis. Ours was the biblical Genesis, which we know is not scientific, uh, but the indigenous people, they also have their Genesis stories and they are embedded in their philosophical in understanding of their relationships with country. So those two come together and they come together in the sense of wonder uh, because we, we, share the, we share that together with the indigenous people um, unable to give a, 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 a logical explanation, 
we are, are confronted by the sheer wonder of it all. Yeah, that's um, in a nutshell what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> accessing the awe, accessing the wonder, accessing our hearts. Thank you, Jim, for that wonderful expression of what we've dedicated our lives to for the past three decades. <laughs> and so, and just carrying it forth from Australia, from that beautiful dream time. So, yes. I, I, I've noticed, I noticed that four folks have put their hands up as Connie requested, and we will have a question and answer section later, but we did want to have you do that so that we could actually acknowledge you. So Tracy Potter there is in Australia, yeah. Jenny Bowl is in Australia, yeah. and Frances Ellis, hello there, yeah. one of our beloved supporters. Yeah. And, and Piper, Piper. Dellums, bless you, we yeah, love you, you so yeah. yeah and, uh, and more of you, and Jenny, and please, more of you, put up your digital hands so we can acknowledge you because we just love you and, and bless you. So our whole extraordinary Australian adventure was, uh, there's Olivia and Richard. Yeah. Um, so our extraordinary Australia adventure was definitely a call from spirit. And it just unfolded so magically. We were so loved, so cared for. Oh, and there's Janice, yeah, and, and there's Mark, Dan, and, Dan and Rita. I mean, oh, come on. Yahoo. Oh, would you our all kindly, Would you all kindly just jump out of the screen and let's <laughs> let's party? Our beloveds. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so um, Australia was just beyond the beyond with with so much love and so much Kindness. care Whoa. and driving us folks mm. driving us hither thither and yon and housing us and inviting us to corroborees and um and the two mungo events were phenomenal we were so blessed to be family with the bowlers and be included and which we recorded uh the first uh event for them and it was just a family affair up at lake mungo which was so blessed that we got to be on that on that lake and on those um um moraines those um, whatever you call them <laughs> the lunettes the lunettes <laughs> and uh uh just to be family and then be at peninsula hot springs with Very everyone sweet. and several of the presenters here who were here with the meeting the dreaming uh, earlier and uh, the Rainbow Corroboree, and there's Dan Atkins. And Sacred, Sacred Earth University, Sacred who Earth hosted University. us in a beautiful way, both in Byron Bay and at the Corroboree, wow. Yeah, and this Corroboree was a Rainbow Corroboree, and it was um, a, a going forward into this oneness uh consciousness and and that's a huge deal is is this going forward you know to to go beyond protocol to go beyond history and and ceremonial the ways and everything that's just so important in the past that's been so important to keep us connected and 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 now to go forward into a new reality takes a lot of of courage and a lot of open-heartedness which that um, rainbow corroboree uh, exemplified. And um, we are just, we're so blessed to be there for a week on the Rocky River with Uncle Louie, who, whom you'll see in the teaser shortly. And, um, and the, the rainbow folks, uh, the rainbow tribe family, right? The, the, yeah. The rainbow. yeah, the rainbow tribe, which started right here in Colorado in 1974 in Granby, Colorado and it's spread throughout the world and there's a big presence in Australia and we got to meet an entire large mob of those beautiful people. So we'll now, how about if we screen the um, trailer, the teaser, it's 20 minutes folks. So um, relax and enjoy it. You're gonna meet most of the folks. We actually interviewed 40 people. 10 Aboriginal, um, Indigenous, we know now it, it comes out Aboriginal, but it's more uh, fitting to say Indigenous. So uh, 10 Aboriginal, see, <laughs> Indigenous elders, 
and others and, and other transitions ones. then it transitions into the white fellows and yet it reflects back constantly it's completely informed by the indigenous australian experience i would say so, so here can we, we do that yeah so ben you can uh, ben, are you ready to fire, fire that up? it up here we go here we are get on the okay. plane Nagelburi, welcome and greetings to all my relatives from Australia and across the oceans. I wish to acknowledge the Vidigal people of this land, the traditional custodians. I belong to Banyalang Minyambu country. I respect Banyalang Minyambu country. When a change of my mother Gunagala, Banyalang Minyambu, Gitabu Naru Jugan. Don't do no wrong around here. The world, as we all know, is in very sick and sorry state. For me, the ancestors, the, the answer is always in the past, and it's around connection to ancestors and going right back um, to the connection of ancestors. Now, the ancestors from all over the planet, all over Mother Earth, cared and shared and nurtured Mother Earth and protected it. My people lived in this country they call Australia now. We lived here. Different, different races, different tribes, different languages. But we were one people. We had ceremony, we had dancing, gathering, marriage ceremonies. We traveled all over this country, but we asked permission to go into someone else's land. My wish, my dreams for a better future, for a better world is that we as human beings look at each other and not see that we're at competition with one another, but we are here on the same planet, in the same space. We need to be able to understand that without understanding each other and wanting to make sure that we all have access to clean water, good air, plentiful food, and that I think how we share and share the space, share countries. Yingala. Hello. Nga nga dingi. Nga yin, yurubul nga guyan. Nga yurubul nga juwan yin. My name is Spirit Possum, Spirit of the Night. Nga yin nga nga linga jiya nga wajilera. Nga baraka yin nga guriya abar nga wajilera nga budrun. A message and a story from our Dreamtime story. A sacred story. Nga yin nga babru guin. Na burgaya na gongun na baligaan ni ke. Ni nga wajilad, ni nga budrum na. A story about the beautiful one in the Ansa Moria. I walk in two worlds, and one of them is my family world, my indigenous world, directly from my mother and my grandmother, my aunties and my sisters. And it's a strength. I walk with a power there. But then I have to do that within the westernized world. I have to walk as an Aboriginal woman in that world and it can be confronting for those that I share that path with. 
humanity finds itself at a juncture in time that uh, its very existence uh, depends on it. Um, uh, the, the notion of this way and that way, your way and my way, the right way and the wrong way, isn't serving uh, humanity as a whole uh, to ensure and maintain uh, and uphold uh, the, 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 not only the human right of dignity, but the ecological uh, balance with purpose of uh, dignity uh, to maintain, preserve, protect uh, land, waters, people and culture. I'm a member of the Stolen Generation and that means I'm an Aboriginal woman that was removed from my family as a baby. I was only eight months old and I'm one of 13 children and um, as part of being a member of the Stolen Generation my name was changed. I was born Joyce Lee West and then my adoptive family changed my name to Joy Makepeace. You know we've got a beautiful blue planet and this blue planet needs us to look after it, clean up our mess. You gotta clean up your backyard first and then you gotta clean up your front yard. To these ancient lands we've come from once where it all began. And so we began by planting a seed on this sacred land we breed. And growing a tree of infinite possibility so perhaps it's time to end the division that had us on a course of collision. So let us embrace our new vision. Saw that rock standing on sacred ground, living on far off turn, and the winds are changing. My journey as an artist took me into uh, First Nations Australia, into Aboriginal Australia. Um, I felt all the hurt and the damage and the wreckage that colonisation had caused. Uh, but I found something much more resilient despite all that. Um, was this drive for healing, for unity of purpose, for... A lot of the old people would say that our grandchildren can walk side by side together into the future. One of the most significant moments in this history of Australia uh, was the establishment of the ancestry of the Indigenous Australians today. That ancestry was brought into sharp focus by the arrival here or the discovery of the remains of Mungo Lady and Mungo Man. Our task is to alleviate fear because fear is the antithesis of love. And we need humanity to engage in love. This is a very important point. And how we deliver this is that we need to create food. Energy, of course, is primary to that. We need clean water. We need a clean and built environment that's radiation proof and actually constitutes a, a safe habitat for people. We look at the James Webb and how extraordinary it's just mind blowing the images that are coming back to us. And so beginning to get a stepping into a, a new, if you like, a dreaming story that's integrating ancient wisdom and the brilliance of science that has been flooding the planet over the last, particularly the last 50 years, that 
with so much information, so much knowledge. I believe that women hold the key to actually create a shift on the planet right now. A key that holds the solutions to regeneration, to balance and to harmony. The key are inner capacities that have been laying dormant for a very long time that are now ready to be expressed and experienced. I am very passionate about the role of mothers and their, their, their duty to, to, to bringing children into the world. And I feel that we have just so much knowledge and awareness um, that has not yet been discovered, I don't think, in a sharing kind of way. I think women are very powerful. Um, Lulu was an 80-year-old senior keeper of the sacred law Aboriginal in the Kimberley region of Western Australia when I met him. He asked me to work with him to write, and his people, to write one book. And they were people who did not read or write. And I laughed, I said to him, but you people don't read or write. And he laughed and he said, no. He said, that's what you fellas do. He said, but we've got the original knowledge. And one of the things that I see is a importance is that connection to country. And in terms of sustainability and caring for nature, I think we can look to First Nation um, knowledges and connections. And for me, I look at instead of the three R's of reduce, reuse, recycle, I see the three R's as respect, relationships and reciprocity. My parents, uh, Catherine and Makasha Roski, they co-founded Hummingbird Community in New Mexico about 26 years ago. And I went to Oroville, India when I was 12 for the first time and had a relationship and along over three decades spent my first year of high school there and lived in in Oroville and going to Oroville was a life-changing experience because I saw at scale a community you know people living together and pioneering in new ways of being I said this is this is what I'm interested in I'm passionate about this Crystal Waters Permaculture Village is a residential eco village in the hinterland of the Sunshine Coast in Queensland Australia the plan was developed in the 80s and I was lucky enough to buy into that plan. I was very excited to see that it was going to be 640 acres full of 83 residential lots and a couple of commercial lots. So a village heart, a village centre where people could have their commercial enterprises and businesses and there'd be a cooperative that helps people with those businesses. Living here in Crystal Waters, uh, beginning back in 1978, living in, in community has been a very vital part for me and I've learned the benefits of that. I would say that I've got 50 or 60 what I call like-minded friends here at Crystal Waters and they're not really like-minded because they've got di quite different ideas and beliefs, but they're like-minded in terms of they're good-hearted people and we're happy to sit and talk with them or I'm happy to sit and talk with them at any time knowing that we do share a lot in common. At the Climate Foundation, we've been working for the past dozen years to regenerate life in our soils and our seas. In recent years, we've partnered with Dave Holmgren and others to apply his dozen permaculture design principles to the marine environment. We call it marine permaculture. And what surprised us was how powerfully the permaculture design principles generalized to the marine ecosystems in addition to the terrestrial ones. Today, I'd like to share my perceptions on healing and unity. Healing is a, a very important thing, even more important. It needs to be understood as to how healing happens. When we're created, created perfectly in a way that everything that can go wrong the body can correct it comes back to attitude I'm a medicine man I make beautiful medicines very high vibrational medicines I call it the golden age elixir what we really have to understand is that you need to believe first you need to believe then you need to trust and for me this exploration is uh, has really opened my eyes to the magic that exists, the power of our healing capacity. 
the power of our truth and our knowing and our remembrance. The future of wellness is in shifting all of the negativity, all of the fear, and the future of wellness is by doing that in vibrational frequencies that allow all the old unresolved pain and fear to automatically be shifted then we automatically rise into a new state of balance and and wholeness and alignment this here is our red and near infrared light therapy the science behind this is called photobiomodulation they've done over 4,000 different clinical studies to determine how light affects our cells and the reason why it does that is because we're not just physical beings we are also electromagnetic energetic conscious beings while we have this incredible resource of nature available to us we also have the chance to come together in new ways in working and collaborating as one through business we're starting to see the opportunity to work from the grassroots up I've been having the honor and the privilege to meet 13 grandmother Nelly Patterson. She's the traditional custodian of Uluru, this big rock which is considered the heart center of the world, the red center. Okay, when I was about 16, 17, uh, in 1968, with my first um, eye contact with a, a three to four story eye spaceship. There has been an evolution in terms of humanity's presence on this planet and how we operate, how we think, how we make decisions, how we relate to one another. If at one point we were primarily instinct driven and that was good, there came a time when we shifted to be operating more from our intellect primarily with instinct and support. There is an opportunity for everybody who's alive now to be part of a beautiful shift and it's a big shift a quantum leap but it's also going to be done with ease by following joy and it's a really exciting time to be alive it's really an honor to be here and as nature becomes i believe a louder and louder teacher as each day goes on i feel like what's seeping up through us cannot be stopped. All we need is love, saying John Lennon many years ago, 50 years ago. I've been very interested in the subject of love since then, and it's a complicated subject and I can't wait to talk about it in detail. But one of the, the key things that are important to me is the connection of love with responsibility. It's all about love. It's as complicated and as simple as that. Uh, it's about relationship. Relationship to yourself, to each other, to the earth. Uh, it's a responsibility as human beings to take those things seriously. Um, it might seem simple to say that all you need is love, um, but it is true. Making the choice to actually uh, love yourself, each other, and the earth, and and taking that decision seriously and acting on it is really important part of what makes us um, human beings. So we're, yes, on this threshold, we're at a turning of the age. We are clearly at a time of great consequence on this planet, and everyone's vision matters, everyone's action matters, every choice we make, every thing is amplified because of the consequence of this moment so we humbly go within we go into nature we draw upon our spiritual traditions indigenous wisdom faith-based traditions spiritual mystical resources of humanity are vast vast beyond measure so there we are no, don't start again. That's Ben. <laughs> now we've got Ben Bowler here himself. Ben, <laughs> would you like to make a comment at this moment and just let us know where we're going with this um, program in the next oh, little? Wow. That, that was amazing, Connie and Andrew. Wow, what a what what a privilege to be able to see that advanced screening and 
What an incredible breadth of work you guys did. You were busy when you came <laughs> here. And uh, oh. to be able to see all those different voices in which you've captured from indigenous wisdom to the variety and the diversity is awesome. Bravo indeed. Bravo to you guys. That's an um, epic, epic work. And I loved it. I loved watching all of those sharings and hearing those different voices and the, 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 the coherence of the themes and the resonance of the different themes that are coming through. Definitely you're onto something. And uh, yeah, just, just, just loved being able to share that here today. Well done, Andrew. Well done, Connie. Well, well done, each of you who shared your genius, your gifts, your catalytic gift to inspiring people to open their hearts and go to this higher frequency so we can just do this thing. So, so that's a teaser, and I trust everybody is adequately teased. <laughs> And here we have Dan Atkins, that poet. What a beautiful oh, yeah. poem he spoke so eloquently for the camera. Yes, Dan, wonderful to have you here. And um, so... I would, I would just ask a question, and it's a question of myself and of Connie here. We titled this project In Search of the Future, and yet I think you can see what we're doing. We're going to the world's oldest people in Australia, and we're about to show you a little bit of our project in the, at the southern tip of Africa, where there's a very ancient history. And why would we do that? Why would that be relevant to the future? Shouldn't the future sort of start now in this moment and be looking to what we're going to be doing tomorrow and next month and in the next century? And my personal answer to that is no. There is something very profound to be learned from these extraordinary, extraordinarily ancient members of our species of Homo sapiens, these people who They've had, I think it's already clear, many, many, many tens of thousands of years to learn what it takes to live in community, to live in a relationship, to work it out. And there's understandings that they have that we may have lost or are on the verge of losing in this modern, sort of postmodern culture of ours. So I just wanted to mention that because we will also be taking a little journey to just do a little trailer from our South African project. And um, I, I'll leave them, that to speak for itself. Yes, and I, I feel that we've had a job to do. So no shame, no blame. We every and and that comes from a, a prophecy that every color of humanity has had a job to do, and us white fellas, we've had a job to do, and that is to transmute those energies of fear, separation, and scarcity, to walk in in this three D suit separate from the rest of creation, and 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 we and all of creation is is now awaiting us to reconnect with our hearts and and take all of creation forward with that love that we carry in our hearts. So my leading edge science has gone beyond quantum science and is really showing us that it's a holographic fractal universe. We are the universe and which the native people, the indigenous peoples have known forever and have had that connectivity to know that every thought we think goes throughout the cosmos. I mean, I learned this from the native people who came into my life 30 years ago um, that, that you know, I just put it on my screen and said, oh, hmm, that's interesting. Well, now science is showing us that everything we do say and think matters to all of creation, not just the human race, but everyone in the creation because we are it. So um, one thing we're going to do before we screen the trailer for our in Search of the Future, What Do the Wise Ones Know? Which was the first film. Which was our first film that came out in 07 with indigenous elders, scientists, and futurists, most of whom we'd known for 20 to 40 years. So they're saying extraordinary things in this film, and we highly recommend that you watch the whole film. And we'll put our uh, link tree into the chat so you can go and access all of our work and um, access the, um, the or original film. But first, we're going to screen our 
United States of America teaser. Ooh, okay, right. the wise ones that so we what, good. What came before the Australia trip? And you will recognize, especially those of you in the U.S. and who are involved, perhaps with the evolutionary leaders, folks like that. Um, you will recognize this mob, different mob from the down under mob. Here we go. Uh -huh. Thank you, Ben. The world is changing, the world's on fire. I want to do my part to inspire change. Hello there, I'm Barbara Marks Hubbard. I'm the storyteller of our evolutionary journey. So deep is our crisis now that there has never been a time like this. I believe as a species, we suffer from a collective dis-ease of separation, and which has been worsening over centuries as a scientific paradigm while making important discoveries relating to the appearance of our world and achieving incredible technological advances has nonetheless done so from the perspective of materialism and separation. Hey, did you know that we have a chance, I mean, you and I have a chance to solve the biggest problem in the world today? I'm not kidding. We have a chance to solve the biggest problem in the world today. All we have to do is make a single decision. When we decide to make the choice, to make a choice, and decide that we want to come from a place of loving, compassionate presence, goodwill, and kinship towards all of life in every decision that we make as our practice of living, then we can begin to imbue the necessary foundational principles that are required for us to reintegrate back into an omni-considerate species. When I think about the only way out is up, I get excited because I know it's true. It is time for us to elevate. It is time for us to move upward. And it is time for us to do this together. We don't have to agree on everything that we are doing in this world, but we do have to agree on the fact that we are in this world together. And together we have this one planet that is the source of so much abundance, that is the source of everything that looks after us, that cares for us, that feeds us. The air that we breathe, the air that I breathe, is the same air that you breathe. Humanity is learning so much about health and healing. Of course, our physical bodies, but now even the space between us. Part of that space between us is called the biofield. And it's literally the exploration of the fields of energy and information that connect us and heal us. Things like electromagnetic energy that we can easily measure and things that have been time honored and understood from indigenous traditions like prana, chi, ki, and other labels that we've given to this beautiful sea of Shakti. One of the most pressing things that's happening today is the fact that we're in the midst of exponential change. Change compounding on change compounding on change, which means that how we do everything, whether it's education, medical, everything is changing exponentially. I mean, you look around you, you see all sorts of division all sorts of problems, um, urgent problems, both at the economic, business, social, government, politics. Every four years in the United States, there's this big hubbub about the presidential election and so on. And uh, we do suffer from several diseases of the body politic, electile dysfunction being one of them, uh, truth decay, uh, and of course, irony deficiency. When something is out of alignment, something is not in integrity with the fundamental harmony of the universe, it, it creates a level of stagnation. So what happens is that stagnation creates a tension. One of the great realizations for me has been because art is a type of transformative force, 
the sense that art brings, the sense of the difficulty that life brings, if we think of it more as an art form. So I am just so excited to be thinking about the next period of time, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. We are living through this most auspicious and extraordinary moment. Today, we are awakening to the fact that we are living in a field of consciousness and energy. And so we are becoming masters of that field, not just at its mercy. I've had the pleasure of working behind the scenes for more than 50 years, looking at the evolutionary future of where we go from this point of either biospheric collapse of our planet, or shall we say, contact with cosmic civilization. I've been asked a number of times whether or not there is a uh, reasonable likelihood that the extraterrestrial civilization will intervene uh, in some way to try to save us from ourselves. We're living in an extraordinary time upon a threshold of tremendous evolution. And in this time, it's imperative that we're doing our inner healing work in order to help heal, transform and regenerate the systems and structures of culture, ecology, and economy. It's about exercising the innate ability within us all to embody the ultra social, loving, nurturing being that we all are. The heart is an amazing energetic system that connects with the physical heart. It actually has its own intrinsic nervous system, a little brain Put your hands on your heart and become aware that within you is already the future human potential of the emerging new era. Within you is already that potential of our evolutionary next step. When I think about the 8 billion people living on this planet, I think about how can I be of greatest service. By being authentic and being yourself, doing what you love, we fit together and weave this tapestry of community. And I do believe that when we are truly taking care of our bodies and truly taking care of our soil, then emerges beauty and play and expression and dance and music and corn juggling. I'm optimistic about the future. I understand that there are extraordinary problems facing humanity, no doubt about it. And we've got to wake up now. Many of the things that we fear, like the emergence of AI, I believe are actually going to become tools for the amplification of wisdom. Imagine that we can have enlightened AI that has been trained on the wisdom traditions of the world and reflects the highest moral and ethical development of us that actually can point us to those things that are most beneficial for our nature. AI is about augmenting intelligence. It's about understanding that creativity moves in us, flows in us, and gets stronger the more we have feedback and can work with each other. It's not about um, just coming up with metaphoric or um, philosophical ideas. It's about how do we implement those ideas and make true change. How do we inform the masses and get other people to realize that it is time, it is critical mass, it's time for us to make a change, and we can't keep going down this path that we have to wait until things get bad before we even make a shift. We can actually do things now in order to make sure that the future for humanity for thousands of years is full of peace, love, and harmony. So we're in that moment where coherence is imperative, where choices matter, and therefore, if we come together, all of us of goodwill in the spirit of radical collaboration at this precarious but also precious moment, I believe that the spirit that has guided life for billions of years will somehow, in a way that we cannot even fathom, work in and through all of what we're seeking to do to bring goodness into the world and fashion a pathway to the future that will make generations under the seventh generation proud that at this moment there was a critical mass of people who stood up and made the difference necessary to ensure the continuity of human survival. 
But here's the thing you learn if you study billions of years of evolution, as I have. You discover that crisis precedes transformation. You discover that problems are evolutionary drivers. We are spirits having a physical incarnation on this planet. Every single thing, if you truly trust God, every single thing that has ever occurred in our history to every human being, every culture, even to the Earth Mother herself, is something that is leading us to expand ourselves spiritually. This is about wisdom. And I believe the truest thing we can do is to, in humility, get back in alignment with the wisdom traditions and get back in alignment with natural law. So I just want to encourage everyone, please, to live your highest values, live your highest standards. Remember to pray and meditate because the future lies in each individual. And as each individual grows spiritually, the entire planet grows spiritually. And there is where it lies. Peace. Can we do it? Can our species embrace a consciousness of oneness, of unity with each other and with the divine? I believe we can. All we have to do is intend to do so. And our intention will act as a magnet, a powerful magnet, with inspiration drawn from many sources, not the least of which might very well be a film that you just happen to watch. Come and dance, come and sing, come and pray, come and bring all you are and all you love. A new day is dawning, I feel it calling us to help rebirth, a new way to be on earth. I want it. Catalyze, take flight, burn with the sun, dispelling the night. Help humanity find its way back home. I wanna unite, stand and rise, shine bright, bring the truth into the light. Help humanity find its way back home. Let's find our So there you have it, our USA trailer. And here we have Janice Hall. Hello, Janice. And Welcome. I want to honor Janice at this moment for being the catalyst of the whole Australia adventure and the connector, the hallway to so many in Australia. So Janice, we're so happy you're here with us. Yeah, thank you. Yes, we are eternally grateful. And she's a longtime friend from decades ago. So yeah. it's that synthesis. And what I saw and experienced in, in Australia was that spirit has ramped up this interconnectivity amongst the folks in their hearts that have this job to do. And it's actually something I saw 30 years ago that everyone in their hearts were going to be connected all over the world and at deep levels of trust and in interconnectedness. And I called it the good guy network. And it's, I had no idea I was gonna be a part of it. And man, isn't it exciting everybody? Just to, <laughs> to be here together and just to know that, that we're part of this process and that all we've got to do is suit up and show up and bring our gifts to the party. All right. So let me just do a quick little update. <clears throat> Firstly, there's another te a teaser which we won't show tonight, but know that it does exist. And is it on YouTube? Yeah, it's on, on the LinkedIn. I'll put in our LinkedIn. We'll put it in the LinkedIn. In the so chat. there's another 10 minute teaser prior to the one you just saw. So there's a whole other cast of characters who were already in the can. We just we so we just wanted to show the down under Australia one. And this most recent, this most recent one before that, we've got one more journey, which is to the Pacific Northwest and up into Canada, to where that beautiful voice you just heard, where, whence that beautiful voice is emanating, Tatiana Speed, 
who's going to be in the film, and then a, a series of people both up in the Vancouver, British Columbia area, and then Washington State, there's some extraordinary individuals there, Oregon, back down to California, there's certain people that we haven't succeeded in getting it all the way down to LA and back by November sometime here to Colorado to sit down for the winter and see what we got. So that's the update there. So <laughs> yeah. And oh look, there's oh, oh <laughs> that's not Janice Hall, that's Joni Carly that herself. Is indeed Joni Carly. <laughs> Hello there. Hi. Hey Joni. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Joni, Joni's in the ten minute teaser. Joni's in the yeah, in, in the, the, the other teaser. Yeah. Uh -huh. So um so yeah, so we'll just screen now. We'll just screen the the two minute uh, trailer to our uh, in search of the future. What do the wise ones know? And then we'll open it up for any Q and A and we'll any have a comments conversation and, and do a little yarning, as they say. And down please, under. everyone who has anything had anything to do with it, please raise your digital hand so you come on and we can see so you we can and acknowledge honor you. you. Yeah. All right. get a future automatically because most species are extinct and our species certainly seems to be approaching extinction. Many people have been concentrating on the Mayan calendar which we all know ends December the 21st 2012. The Mayan calendar predicts that in the year 2012 there will be the end of uh, life on this earth as we know it now. The elders I've worked with in Guatemala, they say we came from the stars, which would make us all extraterrestrial. <laughs> so you're saying that we are not monkeys, that we're not going to become monkeys, or we are not coming from the monkeys? Everything out there is spiritual. This is a spiritual world, a divine world. All things, seen and unseen things, originate from this great power. We can't live really spiritually healthy or physically healthy or mentally healthy without love. What could a new consciousness bring to life on this planet? Wake up and be aware. Do something. Change your way of life. If we believe in scarcity, if we believe in separation, we will create poverty, we will create war. The kind of shift I'm talking about in growing up is literally strictly a change of how we think. Where we are going is a great awakening, a great awakening of the magic in the human heart. minutes left. Here we are. Thanks, Ben. Well done with the uh, technical engineering. Much appreciated. Went perfectly smoothly. So everyone, anyone who would like to speak, um, we just honor each person here and more. I wonder who's in the audience who hasn't um, raised we their hand. We had a hand up, uh, Connie and Andrew, uh, maybe to speak. So um, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Rita. Hello, friends. Hello, Rita. <laughs> Everyone, these folks were just in Carbondale, Colorado um, a few days ago and did a beautiful program here at our Third Street Center for the Center for Human Flourishing, along with Shayla Paradise, this amazing singer, 
friend of ours who adventured with Connie and Andrew, Ben and his family down in Australia. This is delightful to see the focus on your work tonight. It's been a long time coming, but the synergy of what happened with the folks down under is extraordinary. And I feel that what we did here the other night landed the dreaming here on this land, the land of the Nuch, the people who were removed from this area. And hopefully we can start dialogue with them and bringing them back into the conversation here. It's so needed. So thanks, dear friends, and lovely to and see you. Say, Rita, if I may, I want to acknowledge, or we want to acknowledge Rita's um, not-for-profit for being our fiscal sponsor, which is very significant, and also for reminding me that we forgot to honor the people whose land we are sitting on here in Loveland, Colorado, in, uh, in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, the Arapaho, as far as we know, and we don't know a lot of the history, but we are in native land here and we honor their spirits, their history, and what they have yet to bring to us in the future. And in, I, I spent 30 years in the Roaring Fork Valley and brought, always brought the Ute people who were the original caretakers of the land there into any program <clears throat> that I presented throughout that 30 years. And you met Grandmother Bertha Grove in that little trailer. Uh, wake up, do something. <laughs> she was a, a, treasured, way of life. a treasured friend. And uh, Rita's work with the Ute people is, is very important and, and carries on uh, a deep relationship that the Roaring Fork Valley has had with its original people. So that's exciting. And I'm seeing a bunch of people here who have not raised their their digital hand. Maureen Edwardson okay. and Linda DeHart and I'll Joan Peter Bowler. Peter it's good to, good to see you. How about raising your digital hand, you guys? Uh, you're Tracy, such Tracy put her hand, put her hand up uh, to, to, I think, to say something. Connie? Yeah, Tracy, let's get a, a little bit of a down under voice oh. here, Tracy. What can you tell us? Good morning. It is morning down here. It's 1047. And I'm out with the sheepdog. I'm a real Aussie. My father was a livestock auctioneer. I'm back in my homeland. And I want to cry because working in this way, um, I always know I'm from here. I came here. Our family came with the same time as Aboriginal. And we, our family worked with Aboriginal family. And we've come together again. The elders, one from the West, is married to his wife from here. And... Um, and I'm going to ring Margie today and definitely say let's meet. Um, the place we're meeting has been rained on and flooded and burnt, and so it's been deeply cleansed of some murderous stories. And now we, I want to cry, now we're going there. So she said ring me when you're ready, and we keep putting it off, but I'm going to get off and ring again. And um, and so we, we will come together. Um, her family has a massive story, as does her husband's. Um, from the tribe over around Perth. Um, so I wish to show them your your material, I'll call it for now, because I'm running out of words. And um, and and it's time we start um, knitting again, weaving together. And as Margie says to me, the stories are the past. Let's move now together into the future. And so I just thank you. You're shining extra special today, you two. It's like, oh. and Connie, you're so, you're always beautiful. But today, I don't know, you're stepping outside yourself into the light. It's just mm -hmm. magnificent. Well, so it's being I'm here with you all. Up. Yeah, soaking it up. And thank you. Thank you, Ben and Jenny and the whole bowl. Of, what a family. I mean, what a family. And oh, um, I've, I've known about the fact, Jim, since I was a child. Um, my mother introduced me to Mungo Man 50 years ago, uh, even longer actually, because I was a young girl, not 15, younger. And and so in some way, I, I, I just go, I don't even know what to say. I'm there from the beginning and I want to cry, you know. And just thank you for bringing the waters home, you know. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, Tracy. And one person, thank you so much, Tracy. And what I want to do is acknowledge a dear friend here, um, Jennifer Black Elk, oh. uh, who is here in the audience, who is the daughter 
of Wallace Black Elk, one of the great Lakota elders who came into my life uh, in the 90s and through whom I saw this reality. And she carries that spiritual knowledge, as does her son. So um, can you put, raise your hand so Ben can see you and just acknowledge you, your digital your hand? Digital hand. Um, mm -hmm. if, trying to figure that out. Okay, it's not uh, cold. Down, it's, down in reactions it's, uh, at the bottom. L-A-K-O-L. Uh, there you go. Oh, she's got it Oh, I now. see it. Raise hand. Ah, oh, I did it. Uh, yeah, there you are. So anyway, I just wanted um, to acknowledge her because she's uh, she's carrying it on and she's a beautiful heart and spirit, as is her mm -hmm. son. And they'll be presenting in Fort Collins in association with our photography exhibit, One World, One Family, uh, on Labor Day weekend. So, um, Which is up and running right now. It's running for three months and it's gorgeously curated, not by us, These this, this museum. The Global Village Museum took our photography and our artifacts and assembled them into such a beautiful, I mean, I'm, I, can, I can barely talk about it, as you can tell. And this exhibit has been traveling since 1999, and here it is in 2024. But um, meanwhile, we're just, it's just such a family affair to have this connection with uh, Jennifer and that, that she's coming forward. She's right here in Loveland. And, yeah. and um, oh, isn't it great, you guys? That's this exciting, big, huge Jennifer. family we're part of. Seriously. And Linda DeHart, want to say something to you, but I'm going to have Connie do that. Oh, Would you mind explaining oh, oh, why I'm so excited that we, I'm speechless? Yes, yeah, speechless. <laughs> Linda DeHart gifted us her air miles for my ticket to Australia. And it was then that we knew we were actually going to Australia. That was the big sign that it was going to happen, and it happened so abundantly. And um, uh, Anne Frances Ellis is here, whom we know we met in Oklahoma decades ago, who contributed significantly to our financial aspect. Seriously. And so yeah. all of you. Um, and, just, and then there's Maureen Edwardson, with whom we spent significant time down under, and has yeah. just returned from Ibiza where she had a bit of an adventure and is looking wonderful. <laughs> and Dana Tomasino's here and she, we she interviewed her for the film out in LA um, with the uh, Global Peace Tribe. And of course, and, Joan Bowler, the yeah. queen of us all. Yeah. Thank you for adopting yeah. us, Joan. <laughs> yeah, the Bowler family, we can't just, we just became family with the Bowler family down there, down on the... Um, I think uh, uh, Linda DeHart might have put her hand up to say something. Let's see if we've yes, got about 10 minutes to go. So. Yeah, we need to know who just has their hand raised and who wants to talk. Linda, so. next, and then Maureen. And, and then raise your real hand if you want to speak, oh, along with you your digital hand. There comes Linda. Okay. okay. All right, cool. Uh, hi there. Am I unmuted? Yep. You okay. are. So, <laughs> anyway, um, I also have become very emotional tonight by seeing all of this. And I, I, I'm actually, because I'm an audiovisual artist, I wanna actually acknowledge the merging of the, the information, conversations, the meeting of the people was actually supported beautifully by the music. And I was, it, it just, the, the two merging was, was just so overpowering for me. I just had to cry. Wow. It's so beautiful. Oh, Thank you. You want to tell her where the music came you from? You tell her where the music came That's so beautiful. Connie will tell you. I'm not going to say a word. Oh, well, you created it. <laughs> you tell them. <laughs> yep, that's my music, Linda. So, yeah. Well, you see, that music was so integral to its arrival in our hearts. Hmm. Oh, wow, that's you. that's wonderful. Thank you, Linda. That's important to me as a as a music producer. That's really significant. Thank you. Okay, so Big wow. Who want, Who else wants to speak? Jenny. Jenny and Maureen, I think. Well, she, she didn't. Maureen oh, didn't raise okay, her. Jenny, you Jenny have to raise your physical hand if she, you want to speak. I think she had. Oh, and Piper just and. Quickly, Piper. I'm just bouncing off what Linda said because when I watched that down under trailer at the end of it, it felt like a 
I mean, I don't use this word very often, but a transmission and it, it, it the, all the layers that were in there and the stories that were being spoken and Linda mentioned it, it we were just sitting, I was, it sounds like a lot of us, a lot of us were sitting in some other realm. I'm not going to try and put words to it, but uh, amazing, beautiful, powerful. And Tracy, I want to honour you for being part of this community for so long. You've probably been holding that Australian, you know, that Australian um, country in here and we are it's such a gift to be taking it out and sharing it and, and Connie and Andrew what a privilege and what beautiful work and beautiful stories you both have been walking for so long oh, thank you Jenny haven't we all Jenny <laughs> <laughs> everybody here really what a, what a what a team what a mob <laughs> what a mob okay, Magic, Maureen. Mag magical mob Maureen what have you got to say my darling well, being part of the magical mob i just want to say how much fun it was to <laughs> uh crash your honeymoon <laughs> yeah, there's that <laughs> yes, you know, it was a it was a joke wasn't it oh i'm gonna come down under and crash your honeymoon because i've been wanting to come to australia for many many like many 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 years uh i have dna there and so it was so much fun um you know, weaving in and out and flowing in our individual and combined uh, agendas, if you will. I had no agenda. I just I just decided to ride my magic carpet and see where it took me. So it was very adventurous and uh, so adventurous that, you know, I had to go to Ibiza then and have a heart attack in uh, in Spain. But I was a miracle because of the power of love and healing prayers from everybody from all over the world, many of you here. So I just love to take every moment I can to say thank you to everyone because the 100% artery got a couple of stents in it in the emergency midnight drama. And there was a 70% other uh, block and with all the power of prayers, you know, three or four days later, they couldn't find it. It was done. So I got kicked out of the hospital. So, um, yeah. And you look like a million Where bucks. You? you look, look 10 amazing. years younger. Look Thank you. Thank you. And, and yes. And, and, you know, you know, looking at that footage, you know, of, of, um, of uh, my little bits um, and seeing and what I hadn't seen because it's like a lobster being in a pot of water. It warms up and you don't realize you're getting cooked. And that heart whole thing was building up for a very long time. So mm -hmm. I just feel so grateful now to be as vibrant as I am, more so than ever before. And so thank you for your your feedback on that. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you so much, Connie and Andrew. I mean, we're such good, close friends. And um, you, you do my heart good. And looking forward to always uh, playing more together as we do and looking forward to you coming up to vancouver better make sure yeah. i'm here and not gone back to australia or something oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, so thank joan. you Ooh, who's next who would like to speak joan, next joan, joan. joan i just want to say you're most welcome to be um welcome uh, to be part of our family you are anyway so i'll adopt you at any time <laughs> <laughs> you come back and yes I, i'm I really want to really express how exciting that I'm, I'm talking about the Australian version. Um, how interesting! So many different um, Indigenous representations. How broad and wide and exciting the Indigenous world is back here in Australia. We don't always really. We just think they're all the same. They all look the same. They some of them act the same. That's certainly you have demonstrated beautifully. That is not the truth. They uh, are individually beautiful people, and uh, I am so happy you've made that film. It's a beautiful, um, artistic uh, uh, piece of work by both of you. So thank you for that. And and I do yeah. think Linda the heart just a little word, and she may get a little bit upset with me. That Linda is, it needs special love and care at the moment because she's had a bit of a setback. She's not mm. saying anything, but um, uh, she may want to say something. She may not, but I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think I will like to say something. Good. Thank I, you. I just, uh, <laughs> it's not often that you get picked up by a microburst, thrown to the ground, rolled around, and rescued by people who were eyewitnesses. 
So that happened in the Boston area this past Friday afternoon. And um, it's been amazing. Um, I, I'm still trying to integrate it all. I had amnesia through the whole thing. So I didn't, I don't have the residue of trauma in my mind or in my emotions, but my body took it. The body has, the, has, has actually created such a strain on my heart that I had a minor heart attack. And I guess, Maureen, I am being inclined to say, I want to make connection with you. I don't, I want to process this because I just, I, something, it's not often that a human person gets lifted to a whole nother realm. And I, I, I'm, I'm still in, in sort of wonder, and I'm not going to say shock. I'm in still in wonder of it all. And I feel like I need to ground it with somebody like Maureen. I'd like to make contact with you. And so it's very special for me to be able to share this with my digital community, this, this global community that is so important to me. And because I have to say that I'm very well taken care of here. I have a wonderful various communities that I'm part of that have been stepping forward to help. And um, so, so I'm so blessed to be able to be part of Unity Earth. Thank you all. And I think I just do want to say one more thing. I'm also so blessed to have had the vision of say, saying, when Connie and Andrew said that they wanted to do this and that they wanted to raise money. And I said, I went to bed and I said, oh, I so wish that I could help them. I want to help them so badly, but I don't have that kind of money. So I woke up in the morning and I said, but yes, but I have frequent flyer miles. So that was divine intervention. And, and, and so therefore I feel that that was a God-given gift also. And I feel blessed to have been able to be conscious enough or integrated enough to be able to listen to that movement. And I'm so proud of being part of what you're doing, Connie and Andrew. Beautiful, thank Linda, you. thank you, thank well, you. Thank you, and we're just building on your energy with your flags of one family that are flying behind you. And so heading for Japan. We're yeah. all by you and your energies, yeah. dear Linda. So let's see, who else? And, uh, could, I, could I just take a, a quick a moment to invite everybody to spend five seconds uh, mm -hmm. because it's not the t time in our quantum level of our heart. It's the intention and the intensity of our love and our healing prayers to just take just to the count of five, let's just send beautiful energy to Linda right now because I know the power. I received that. So let's just take five seconds. Mm -hmm. We love you, Linda. We appreciate you so, so much. And we see your wholeness and your full recovery. Blessings. Thank you, Maureen. Yeah, I would like I would like to hear a word from Piper. Piper, I'd love to hear a word from you just to hear your voice, because I know you've Aww. been a lot since we last spoke. Yes, and I love you both, Connie and Andrew, and this entire family. Um, it was stunning to see this beautiful interweaving of all of humanity in your film, to see the Rainbow Coalition coming together after we have really walked and traversed such traumas and dramas and fears and pain and suffering together as a unified collective consciousness and to see the practice of ubuntu of forgiveness in the soul from third to fourth to fifth dimension just really resonating through this project and andrew knows i also lived in south africa and he knows ubuntu is a is a practice of south africa this ultimate uh beauty of forgiveness what I saw in the film, um, I felt that I was encountering the holy and the ordinary. And in that is the place where we find God. And I did hear, and I, I'm looking for her name. I believe it was Linda, but she spoke of the wonder and the wonder and the awe. And I've come to believe that the awe is in our beholding. 
it's in our beholding and seeing the veils of the world peeled back again and again. And this is what you have been doing in the world and doing in the earth and what you're presenting so eloquently on film. And I'm grateful for that. And um, uh, the practice of beholding the beautiful and what you have shown us is the essential soul and spirit of humanity. You've shown us from the third dimension to the fifth dimension, this place where love is going to be the only tool, the resonance at the base of Babel, the one language that is going to get us all through. And thank you for being the vessels of love and allowing all of these voices, this orchestra of humanity, of the beauty and perfection of humanity to come forth in such a stunning way. You were called to the earth for this. You've been doing it throughout your lives. And you are dear and loving, not just to myself, but to all of creation, to my indigenous ancestors who are Sac and Fox and Blackfoot and from Mali. I, I thank you. The finned ones, thank you. The two-legged, the four-legged, thank you. The wooden people, the forest and the rock people, the mountains and the water people, thank you. And all of our ancestors and every dimension. So God bless you. And let this journey, you know, carry on for generation to generation for all of our children to be blessed with what you're pouring into the earth. I love you. Oh, mm. Piper, bless you. Bless you. Wow. What a beautiful Ooh. articulation of the heart and we're honored. And Piper has many spoken word videos and films that one can just bask in the beauty of her heart. Seriously. Speaking of generation to gen, Piper is amazing and he's got so many gifts for, for, for all of us here. Speaking of generation to generation, Connie and Andrew, we have the son uh, coming in. I would, La cool, I so. would like to speak for a moment. Can we please send prayers to Piper and healing su supreme divine energy that's universal loving energy for extraordinary miracles of healing that lift all the layers, all the burdens, all the suffering, to bring joy and release and a mm -hmm. miraculous healing. Mm -hmm. To such a gift to our world, she, you bring so much, Piper. You're so generous, so giving. So let some of that giving and generosity come back to you and fill you and heal you from the divine, which is all-encompassing for all of us in the universal. Thank you. So, thank you for being you. And mm. you just thank you, Grace. And for anyone else who is going through the tremendous lesson of cancer. It's just a wisdom. And I know I'll get through on the other side. And I thank you for those prayers. And I'm pulling up the roots of whatever it is that had taken its um taken this masterpiece of creation and painted this deception on my cellular body. And it will be over soon. I'm on my sixth day of an all water fast, which is why I'm a little delirious and I'll can keep it going because I'm going to starve away this dis-ease and stay in harmony with my body. So God bless you for that. God bless you deeply, powerfully. Thank you, Grace, Denise, yeah, for Grace, that. Grace, thank you. Ben, how are we doing time-wise? We're good. Let's do another four or five minutes. Um, is it Lakul has got her son here? Love to, okay, love okay. to hear from... From Olivia. From Olivia, my dear. Uh, I want to say that I'm coming from the wonderful land of Abenaki. Richard and I are here in Vermont, right near the Sunray Peace Village. And it feels so resonant with the beauty of your two films and your teasers, Connie and Andrew. And Andrew, for me, it's a really important moment because when I was writing about the sun back in my dissertation in the 90s, I finished in 95 at Harvard and they, it was, I was comparing the way that the healers were educated to the way psychiatrists in the U.S. were educated. And it was like, it was a little bit threatening <laughs> to my committee back then. And I think that even though the reason I did it was because the head of my committee, the cats, had done wonderful field work among them in the Fijian fields. Mm -hmm. And what makes me so joyful is that here we are in 2004, and this is no longer something unusual 
it's like the indigenous voices are sounding loud and they are they have digital and they have everything you know to get their words across without losing what you said so beautifully Piper the holiness the spirit and I just want to say that you know everybody's talking about spirit now you know you used to have to sneak around when you were teaching in academe you know hello you know your soul <laughs> And so it's very exciting to me that I've lived long enough and that we're all here together and that now this is where we begin. We, so we, begin, you can with spirit. Just, we begin with oneness, we begin with wholeness, we begin with Black Elk's vision of the sacred hoop of the rainbow. So Connie and Andrew, you have put into visuals the trust frequency. And I really want to plug your book and your course on the dance of souls for anybody who wants to continue with these two, because they're both wonderful, wonderful tools. And also they're wonderful ways to start conversations with other people in a very down-to-earth way um, to help others realize that we're already there. Breakdown is breakthrough, as Barbara Marks Hubbard said. Thank so you. thank you, everyone thank you. here, and especially thank you, Mungo Lady and Mungo Man and Kung San, Kina Chow, who taught me so much, and uh, all of those. And thank Olivia, you. I, Olivia, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I want to call. I know we're running absolutely out of I'm time. And I think it's time we heard from a man. You have been incredible. Dan, can we hear just a word from you in your beautiful Aussie accent? <laughs> well, good day, mate. Jingula Banam. It's beautiful to see you both. And uh, thank you so much. It was beautiful to hear from the supporters as well that helped you get out here and you enable you to really bring family together, the oneness. And uh, it was so beautiful to participate in, in the cooperative and, and many events together with you. So, and the Bowler family, beautiful blessings to all of you uh, and, and to the family. Um, probably one message here that I sort of been picking up here on the Dingo Dreaming Land, a uh, beautiful mango tree behind me in North Queensland. And we're talking about the eighth generation. We talk about seven generation principles. We're now the eighth generation. And Piper, you described it so beautifully. It is the oneness of all, the spirit of all things coming together and our decisions to incorporate the decision of all, the animals, the plants, the trees, the water. So that for consideration, that brings the eight, the infinity. So moving from seven generational thinking to the eighth generational thinking where we expand and really consider our family and our oneness family collectively on this beautiful planet. And it was so beautiful for you to imbibe with beautiful family down here. And you're welcome as are all of this family to this beautiful land. And we look forward to sharing our collective wisdoms. And thank you so much for this work and for this call. Very much beautiful to see you all. Thank you, Dan. Bless you, you, bless you, bless you. And Anne, did you want to say something? It's Anne and her son. Is it Anne. Francis? And her son? Yeah. And Francis Ellis, did you want to oh, say? Me. Oh, Lacole, sorry, oh, I sorry. want to hear from Lacole, Lacole. Lacole. Yeah. and her son. Her son. Yeah, that's what I, I was wanting to have them. I don't know if um, Jennifer and Carrie would like to do a closing blessing, a song. No, Carrie, no, no comment. You wanted to say something funny, if you don't mind. Let's hear it. Pardon? Pardon? Ann has had her hand up for a long time. Who? And Frances has had her hand up for a long time. She just, she just spoke. She, she wanted just, to hear from she Jennifer. Jennifer. Well, so she hasn't taken her well, hand so down. She hasn't taken her hand down. Yeah. And uh, one. Sounds uh, like we're out of time, though, friends. So, well, hold on. One thing I I noticed that someone entered the the room, and that is that Evan is Hirsch, Evan who's Evan also a big supporter. Major of ours. supporter, the blue rocker. Maybe the blue he can rocker. play us our lead guitar solo. <laughs> 
Yeah, but that's. I don't know the lady's name, but uh, the zoo name is Lacole, and she's yeah. been waiting a very long time for her son to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's this is who I want like to have give us a, a closing blessing. And this is Jennifer Black Elk and her son Carrie, um, whom I um, acknowledged earlier. And uh, would you guys like to give us a little song or a blessing for closing this lovely time together? Would that be okay? I'll let him do it. Closing. Um, I don't really know what the conversation was about. I just barely came in. Uh, so I really don't know what to pray for, but, you know, uh, all I can do is just sing a song at this time. So I do apologize for my lateness. Uh, no. Everything in its proper time. Yeah, no problem, <laughs> Gary. Um, learn from your people. I just sing um, the Wopla song, his, his many thank you songs. Um, I just sing a, just a general one right now. <clears throat> Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Grandson of the great Wallace Black Elk. Thank you, thank you.